Dear students, in this session we are going to study about cells in greater details. So let us begin. The term cell is not new to you. Can you find out who coined this term and what it means? Now from the biological point of view, I am sure you remember the definition of the term cell. It is defined as the basic structural and functional unit of all organisms. This is a statement which you have learned by heart and remember as well. But what does it actually mean? Let us take a closer look. Whenever you look at any organism or living thing, for example, your relatives, friends, pets like dogs, cats, cows, parrots, fishes, etc. or tiny insects like ants, butterflies, mosquitoes, houseflies, honeybees, etc. or various plants, you identify them by their appearance, that is, by seeing their physical body. These bodies of various organisms appear different from each other. For example, bodies of humans are different from that of dogs, cows, ants or of rose plants or coconut or mango tree. But in spite of being so different from each other, all these bodies of different organisms have one thing in common. All these bodies are made of cells. The question is, then why do we not see the cells when we see these organisms? This is because the cells are very tiny or more apt is microscopic. It means that most cells are so small in size that they are not visible to the naked eye and can be viewed only using a microscope. So the next question is how do these microscopic cells form bodies of organisms that are macroscopic and so easily visible to the naked eye? To answer this question, let us consider one example in greater details. In case of humans, we know that our body is made up of many parts and organs that form organ systems. When we take a closer look at our legs or hands, we know that these parts are made up of the variety of bones, muscles, other connective tissues, blood vessels, nerves and covered with skin on the top. Similarly, when we consider internal organization of our body with example of our digestive system, we observe that the mouth with all the teeth, tongue, jaws, the food pipe or oesophagus, stomach, liver, pancreas, small and large intestines are various organs and parts that make up our digestive system. In the same manner, Nose, nostrils, pharynx, larynx, tranchia, bronchi, bronchioles, lungs constitute to the respiratory system. All the organs that we have mentioned so far and even in the rest are made up of basically tissues like connective tissue, muscle tissue, nervous tissue and epithelial tissue. All tissues in turn are made up of very systematic clustering and arrangement of cells. Thus, now we can say that entire body is made up of cells. In a different manner, we can say that if we were to take apart all the parts and organs in the body and then start separating all the tissues that make these organs and then start deconstructing all the tissues, we would end up with lots and lots, almost trillions of cells of various kinds. Now one would question, is it possible to break down or deconstruct these cells further and what would we obtain if we did so? The answer is yes. We can break down any cell and we will end up with components that make up the cell like the cell membrane or plasma membrane, cytoplasm and various cell organelles like nucleus, mitochondria, Golgi bodies, endoplasmic reticulum, lysosomes, vacuoles, ribosomes to name a few. So the next question is why don't we term these cell components as basic structural units of living things or organisms? Well, answer is pretty simple. Can you guess? Okay, let me ask you another question. When do we term things as living? I hope you remember characteristics that distinguish all organisms or living things from non-living things. Let us quickly revise. Living things, non-living things. Living organisms need food, air and water. Non-living things do not need food, air and water. Living organisms grow. Non-living things do not grow. Living organisms can move on their own. Non-living things cannot move on their own. Living organisms are sensitive. They respond to changes around them. Non-living things are not sensitive. They do not respond to changes around them. Living organisms reproduce themselves. 
नॉन लिविंग थिंग्स डू नॉट प्रोड्यूस लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म रिस्पायर दे रिलीज एनर्जी फ्रॉम फूड नॉन लिविंग थिंग्स डू नॉट रिस्पायर लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स एक्सक्रीट दे गेट रिड ऑफ वेस्ट मटीरियल फ्रॉम देयर बॉडी नॉन लिविंग थिंग्स डू नॉट एक्सक्रीट नॉन लिविंग थिंग्स डू नॉट एक्सक्रीट फ्रॉम देयर बॉडी लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स हैव अ डेफिनेट लाइफ स्पैन आफ्टर विच दे डाई दैट इज दे हैव अ डेफिनेट लाइफ साइकिल नॉन लिविंग थिंग्स डू नॉट हैव डेफिनेट लाइफ साइकिल नाउ गोइंग बैक टू द क्वेश्चन एज टू वाई दिस सेल बट नॉट सेल कॉम्पोनेट्स आर टर्म एज बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर यूनिट्स ऑफ ऑर्गेनिजम्स none of the components which make up the cell that is the cell organelles or the membranes or the cytoplasm on their own exhibit the characteristics of life and features of living things or organisms mentioned above like need for nourishment growth response to stimuli from surroundings reproduction etc it is only when all these components are assembled together in an organized manner to form an entity termed as cell that major change in nature occurs and the basic signs of life are exhibited by that cell all cells require nourishment and utilize nutrients to produce energy and grow cells respond to changes in the environment cells undergo a process of division more aptly cellular reproduction to produce more cells identical to them and cells die after completing their life cycle this is the very reason why we term cell and not the components of the cell as fundamental or basic living entity or the most basic structural unit of all living organisms so students i think now you understand the true meaning of the first part of statement which defines cell as basic structural and functional unit of living organisms dear students we now summarize the points covered in this session one definition of the term cell cell size and components of cell two formation of complex body organization from cells three key features of living things or organisms can you find answers to the following questions one what is cell theory of life Two, who proposed the cell theory? Three, who constructed microscopes for the first time? I am sure you will easily find answers to these questions when you read the chapter from your textbook.